Well, Kurt Verkel is a former ambassador to NATO. He joins me live now from Washington. Thanks very much indeed for, for joining us. Uh, Hamid Karzai is already very angry with NATO and the US, and this is just going to make things worse, isn't it? Well, I think that there's a tussle going on because of the withdrawal of the U.S. and the NATO forces coming up. Uh, Karzai has had a relationship where he's both been dependent upon the international forces for security, but also trying to keep a distance from them in order to portray himself as closer to the Afghan population. And I think that this kind of incident is an ex example of that, where he needs to show that he is concerned about the actions of the U.S. forces and the NATO forces in Afghanistan, even while arresting this Pakistani Taliban commander may very well be in Karzai's own interest for security in Afghanistan. Now, where do you think this leaves U.S. and Afghan interests and relations now? Well, I think the key issue here is what the U.S. and the NATO presence after 2014 will be. Uh, and that's the real struggle. There's a lack of a commitment on the part of the United States and NATO as to what that presence will be. And in the absence of such a commitment, President Karzai doesn't want to be signing over the rights of Afghanistan for jurisdiction in their own country in a way that would be criticized in Afghanistan itself. So each side is kind of waiting the other one out to see who is going to blink in terms of uh, what's the commitment from the U.S. side or what's the willingness of the Afghan side to provide the protections and the uh, juridical protections for the international forces that are needed for them to stay. Why do you think it was so important for the U.S. to get Mesud? Uh, I think that uh, this has been a problem from the Afghan operation for years and years now, is the ability of insurgents to cross the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan with relative ease. So no matter what you try to do inside the territory of Afghanistan, it's always being undermined by insurgents who are operating from outside of Afghanistan. So the ability to get some of these insurgents uh, uh, captured to be able to gather intelligence from them and push back on that, I think is really essential to the sustainability of Afghanistan after the international forces begin to leave. Now, recently we've seen uh, covert operations against individual targets in Somalia and Libya. Is this a change of tactics for the U.S., do you think? Well, I think there's a little bit of a coincidence involved. I'm, I'm not sure that uh, you could have timed it in such a way to say, okay, this week we're going to capture three people. It's really reacting to the information that's available at the time that allows you to do it. The one thing I would say, and it's part of your question, is that there does seem to be a desire to capture rather than just to use a drone strike and kill. And that may be related to a desire to gather more intelligence about the activities of uh, al-Qaeda in the case of uh, Libya or Somalia, or the Pakistani Taliban or the Afghan Taliban in Afghanistan. You mentioned the drone strikes there. Obviously, they are controversial. Do you think this is likely to take some of the political pressure or political heat off the drone strikes if they, they carry on this type of tactic? Well, I think the, the function of the drone strikes is really where you're not able to use any other means to attack the target or to uh, deal with the insurgents that you know where they are and what they're doing. If you can't do it in some other way, you can send in a drone to, to make a strike. Uh, in these cases, they found that it was possible to use special forces to insert them, to capture an individual and pull them out. I think that we won't see a diminution in the use of drones where that's the only option available. Really interesting to get your views on this. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, Kurt Volker. My pleasure. Thank you.